Hey guys, talk about FFIE. Uh, two took two shorts on this. Um, funny enough, it seems like Trade Zero didn't even have shares of this until uh, uh, over in this consolidation. Um, but yeah, so kind of a black swan penny runner, right? So uh, biggest thing about this name, and uh, it's the most important thing to realize, it's not even the gapping percentage, it's not the extension, um, it's the volume, right? The volume, volume determines pattern, right? Volume really determines what a stock is capable of, plus the book, right? Well, how's the order book stacked? Uh, but in this case, the order book was, I actually wasn't using book map almost at all. I actually won't be using, um, I actually won't even be bringing up book map. And that's just because uh, the book was so insane. Uh, I could show you parts of it, but really um, I, I considered it mostly unusable because uh, the levels on the book had, you know, it'll have 500,000 shares on the bid here, 800,000 shares on the ask here, eight, a million shares on the ask. There's all these crazy, crazy orders. Um, that it was it, it was pretty much unreadable for the most part i was i was purely going to trade off the chart um and kind of trade what i know about um high volume plays and volatility patterns right so uh i took two trades first trade was on this push over here um we had some painted lower highs painted high day so that is bullish bullish factor but keep in mind this this run actually started from four and a half cents so at this point, the stock was up something like 2,700%. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> like I'm not really gonna be looking for the long, but I still want like a pattern based on um, high volume midday price action, right? And the way I usually approach it is, um, and this volume was insane. I, I really have not seen this type of volume since 2021. And I'll think of that yesterday and then, uh, Today I got over a dollar and it was still trading 10 million shares a minute. So the volume is true, truly insane um, in a extremely bullish way, but up 2,700%. I wanted to take some type of pattern, right? So, um, you know, we get, we get the first up halt, we get the short trap dump and we get a squeeze, right? So I'm like, all right, all the shorts who kind of chasing the morning price action got squeezed. Um, it starts to get really heavy and we start to get painted lower highs, right? And a lot of times with painted lower highs, um, there's kind of two things that can happen, right? You could get your, you know, lower high squeeze or they could be building, especially as stocks become more extended, um, they could be building the backside liquidity to potentially push it and then knife it, right? And that was kind of my theory on this. Um, so, you know, I was telling my Discord, I was like, hey guys, I'm just going to wait on this. You know, a big part of my trading is not feeling FOMO on these types of drop, you know, these types of uh, pullbacks here. You know, especially on the consistent high volume names. The thing about the consistent high volume names is um, it's quite rare that they just go straight up, straight down. It's more of like a lower volume thing um, or something where... High volume comes in only on the only on the on the squeeze and then immediately loses volume goes back down. But this was just I mean multi day runner some multi day runners I inherently think are strong. Consistent volume five to ten million shares a minute fifteen million shares on the squeeze it's just insane the whole thing is insane. So I was like all right it's crazy high volume let me just wait for the midday structure you know let me let me wait for the pullbacks let me wait for some you know ideally some higher lows some painted levels, and then some type of high volume rotation, right? And it's actually kind of, it kind of sucked here because the book was a very useful, right? The book wasn't, you know, I saw, I think it was like an 800,000 chair ask it filled at 120. Um, it started stalling a little bit. I was like, you know what? Um, high days at 127, I can get in in the low 120s. Um, on a stock that's up 2,700%, my risk is actually quite tight. And then, yeah, I mean, pretty much what happens is I shorted it and it was re just relentless, just went straight up. Like, I think once it broke the 125 ask, which was another like 800,000 shares, I was like, you know, let me just get out. You know, on, on crazy high volume names, I generally think high day clear outs are not going to work. So I wasn't going to hold through this and hope it came back down. I was just like, well, I was just kind of hoping for a long trap push and fail. It didn't work. And then 
like there's there's no trade here at all no trade in this entire section <laughs> like i don't see what people are saying trading this at all i see a bunch of volume i see insane soaking on the tape and it's just relentless man it's five million ten million shares a minute like <laughs> like uh so um so we get some crazy extension and now we're getting to the point where the stock's up four thousand five thousand percent and i was telling my discord i was like you know as the stock starts to push up into like black swan percentages and you start to get crazy extension where people are getting squeezed price action becomes um a lot more the vol it's just more volatile and more wonky you're, 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 like early on in the move you know i can expect you know some type of you know 10 15 percent walk down lower high paint some type of soaking you know what i mean we have consolidation over here for um for the stock to have support on, but as the stock starts to go massive parabolic, right? 5,000% squeeze from where the run started, right? Um, the patterns um, become a lot looser, right? And oftentimes you have to have wider risk. You have to, you have to, you're not gonna get your, you know, less than 5%, less than 3% risk on these types of plays anymore. You know, here I can have that type of risk, right? I can have like a 5%, 3% risk, but here, up here, it's, 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 I'm going to short some type of push that I think is bearish. Um, and I'm going to have risk like way up here, right? In the two, in like, you know, I'm going to short in the twos and the two thirties. So we get the initial blow off move. I always tell my room, never chase down halts. Just don't chase down halts. If stock's down halting, you don't have to chase it short. Um, and keep in mind, when a stock is aggressively down holding, especially a high volume stock, um, rotations are more than possible because like there's there's really no significant resistance levels um, pushing this down. Like there's no consolidation pushing this down. Now the stock's up 5,000%, so the odds of it just continuing on and on and on are um, extremely low, but uh, you know, you, you don't need to chase down halts. Just wait for uh, some type of push. And on this case, we had tight halt bands, right? Because this is a, uh, um, you know, this started as a penny stock. So we got super tight halt bands on this on this thing. And what do we know about, you know, manipulated volatility patterns, right? We know that, you know, it's, um, you'll start to see, especially at the top, it's not surprising that we start to see, you know, up halts up halts lead to long traps like this is an up halt long trap up halt long trap right so when this up halt had to happen i said in my room i was like hey a more interesting short would be you know the two dollar break you know two dollar psychological level break um also where this lower high was and shorting any type of stall um above two dollars right but i said you're gonna have to have wider risk right you're not really going to get you can't really use it's not a situation where you can use the book you know have you know and you know an ask at 210 that you can risk off of or something like that like you can't like it's just gonna be i don't think it's gonna come up back up to high a day um and i'm, I'm gonna have to have 25 30 cent risk on this you know so um shorted the stall they got walked down to the one minute 50 was right here they actually did i actually took some off at the one minute 50 just to de-risk um they did you know here's your here's your walk down you can see the lower highs lower lows they swiped support by like they swiped this micro support by one cent initiated it up halted and i was like well i just know from experience that the the, the more extended a stock is the more likely any type of bullish push any type of bullish price action um is has low continuation odds even if it looks you know like a pattern that if it happened a lot lower could have a higher chance of success right so um you know again like i de-risked some here i was like i was gonna keep my risk at 230. this uh unhalted it stalled perfect started rolling back down and then what do we start to get we start to get painted higher lows really nice right so now we have a bullish chart um that if one, you know, I was looking at this 160 low, I was like, well, if 160 gets broken, that'd be great confirmation because we got, you know, these are all these painted higher lows. This is where the lowest low is. If these higher lows get broken, we can have a lot of continuation, right? 
Um, so we start to get crazy capitulation. Here's the one minute 200. Here's VWAP. Um, and then I actually reshorted my covers for a scalp down here. And that's because um, I got a similar idea where the more aggressive these bounces are on, on, on the kind of capitulation patterns, the less support there is. There's just no, it, it's pure emotional either dip buying or people covering, right? And when there's no consolidation, the more aggressive these bounces are, the more likely they are to come back down, right? So again, one of those counterintuitive things on volatility patterns, um, the more, the more, you know, the more parabolic, the more up only the bounce goes, the more likely it is to come back down. So short of that, uh, covered. And now I'm thinking about swinging the rest. You know, I'm still holding my core from the low twos. And if this closes decently weak, I will, uh, just hold it into, um, into tomorrow and see what happens. I mean, it's, it really costs nothing to, uh, really costs nothing to, uh, to swing it. So. But yeah, let's kind of look at this from a more like macro perspective, right? So here, sorry, my daughter was on right next to me. <laughs> um, no, here's uh, you can't actually. So I'm trying to show you where the stock uh, started from. It's because my. There we go. Start from four cents. <laughs> here's your four cents. Here's the beginning of the move. Here's where all the volume came in, um, and we're at 2.35, right? So, again, I'm not I'm on trade zero, so I'm not even shorting penny stocks to begin with. I was watching this yesterday, though. Um, you know, crazy, 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 amazing move, especially this midday consolidation right here. Um, we, and we saw that multiple times. We saw this midday consolidation work twice in a row. But yeah, um, let's just focus on market open. So market open starts, and I'm like, man, um, you know, 0.98, super painted from the day before, super painted from pre-market, after hours. And I was like, man, um, not only do I hope it goes above one for a, so I could get shares of short, but also um, it kind of needs to squeeze those levels for, in my opinion, for it to be a nice short, right? So we get an initial, it breaks one, get initial up halt opens the lower uh, classic <laughs> you only see this in strong markets where a stock opens lower it dip and rips right i did think this could be an interesting short right here when this stalled right here because they filled and this is when i stopped using the book map because this filled like a uh, million share ask dip back down and just rip straight up luckily i didn't have any shares here trade zero did not have any shares i was getting um no shares available early on so I didn't even have a chance to short that, um, even though it would have been an extremely tight risk short, you know, shorting it above 110, risking, you know, 115, 116. Uh, but yeah, here's that. Um, sorry, here's that midday consolidation, right? So when you get big, consistent volume, you see it right here, right? And you start getting a walk down. You start getting lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. Lower highs. This is how, um, you know, stocks like this trap short liquidity um, for a possible rotation, right? But I was thinking this push, right? I was, I was waiting for this. I was waiting for these lower highs to get pushed, right? Because um, if you see my previous videos on really strong stocks, I was like, well, a lot of times midday consolidation you know, the midday short pattern will take 45 minutes to an hour and a half to like to kind of execute. And this was kind of in that hour and a half range. Uh, you know, chart pattern set up, higher lows getting built, lower highs painted, and just being patient on the rotation, right? No, no need to make, you know, on these crazy high volume names, guys, you do not need to make reads the second high, a new high day gets put in. New high day gets put in and you're, you think you're gonna miss a trade, so you're trying to make trades here 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 like um, unless something is very extreme and you have a, a solid thesis of why it might work um really no need and again yeah here's here's that uh parabolic extension just one minute nine one minute 20 straight up right you know I, i've said in these videos when stocks make new highs new high new high new high new high this was a new high 150 you know i think 
you know, stocks on big volume making new highs is, is bullish. That's what I think. I honestly, that's what I think. I think it's a sign of accumulation. I think someone is consistently buying the stock. Um, and, you know, I, that's why I want to wait for the pullback and I want to wait for the higher lows and I want to wait for the midday structure. But once this started going parabolic here, I was like, okay, that's kind of out the window. I kind of need to, to, to um, change my thesis of what I'm going to be looking for. Uh, by the way, this was actually really nice. If you saw my video yesterday on, uh, God, what was it? Uh, God, I forgot what ticker was, but I, AWIN, where I say a lot of times when you get these aggressive initiations on the back, on the, on the backside, a lot of those initiations will not have a lot of support. And if you start to see long patterns, you know, you know, on the backside after enough extension, you know, kind of a classic long trap pattern is big initiation, usually through some lower highs, right? And then retail flag pattern, right? And then it pushes. Sometimes it doesn't even break these lower highs. Sometimes it breaks it in case it did, you know, rejection. Very interesting soak here. Didn't go anywhere. And now it's rolling over. So the only thing about shorting out here, though, again, I would treat it as a scalp, right? I think this pattern... You know, unless you're shorting after the triple up halt up here, um, you know, you know, the other way to trade this, by the way, guys, is when, um, in which some people employ, it's just not really my style, but, um, where's, uh, I don't even know where my, uh, my camera's gone, sorry. The other way to do it would be on these, when it starts getting, you know, up halt, black swan, parabolic, is people just start sizing in as it's going up. And they have stu they have crazy wide risk. So, like, they'll, they'll short on the way up, short on the way up, and they'll risk, like, they'll have risk, like, way up at $3 or something like that. So, not really my style. Some people like to do that. Um, you know, and I thought, man, this will probably have some blow-off move that will be completely unreadable. That's why I said my Discord. And I was like, well, the only hope is, um, you know, some type of uh, some type of long trappy bounce that I can short into. I'm not really expecting it, but I was prepared to hit this um, a lot earlier than I was preparing to hit it in the morning, right? In the morning, I was a lot more willing to wait for the structure. This one, I wasn't. I shorted two. Other people in the room shorted two. Told people I was going to look at that short if it broke two. Um, and yeah, it's been a nice trade so far. Funny enough, if you really zoom out on this, this is still above the 90 MA on the hourly. If you actually look at the hourly, it actually doesn't even... <laughs> like, if you look at the hourly, it doesn't even look that bad. Um, but I think this is, you know, we're getting to a percent extension that is, in my opinion, uh, less like, you know, the continuation probabilities start to go down. So... Um, I did think that was interesting, though. I did think that was... But, yeah, um, that was just my trade on the day. Um, I should have shorted that um, that last push over... Uh, oh, sorry. Over here, but I didn't. Um, but, yeah, uh, cut this really fast. Took this trade. Um, some covers. Nice little scalp here. And we'll see what happens. We'll see. It looks like it's about to close. Market open closes pretty soon. Um currently trading 160 keep an eye on it in the after hours i do have a pretty big buffer already took a good amount of profits took a scalp profit um so i'm pretty good you know as long as this doesn't rotate in the after hours to 2.3 i don't really uh um i'm just gonna assume it's weak so that's a trade there were a bunch of other penny runners i don't really long penny runners so if you want to learn more about longing penny runners uh go look at mikey uh mikey underdog go look at his channel so that's it for today, guys. Um, FFIE, you know, this. a lot of this was about understanding high volume, understanding structure, waiting for a trade. You know, this way I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not taking a bunch of losses here and here and here and here. And, you know, I take one trade, doesn't work, and then I wait for a secondary pattern based on what I know about, you know, kind of, this, this just comes from years of seeing black swan, parabolics and stuff like that. Uh, before I, I wouldn't have usually taken this uh, trade. It just comes, just just comes from experience. So, all right, that's it for today. If you guys have a good one, see you tomorrow.